Hello scientists, welcome to Drupal Mad. Today I'll be answering some of your questions uh, that I've uh, collected from my comments and also the DM in my social media. Uh, so uh, you see that I'm wearing a beanie today because uh, my hair is going crazy. Uh, there's a lockdown in Amsterdam, so there's no hair salon that I can go to to have a haircut. Yeah, that's why I'm wearing a beanie right now, just a tiny style change. So I'll give some quick answers to the questions from you and uh, I might do more of these uh, videos in the future so uh, subscribe to Drupal Mad and uh, leave the questions in the comments and then you will see my answers to them. Let's start with the first question. Um, the first one is coming from an ominous scientist. Uh, so the question is, what skills do you think are the most important uh, if someone who for someone who's interested in being a scientific illustrator when i'm hiring a scientific illustrator i would uh, look at two key skills so the first one is are they able to read research papers and then communicate with the scientists directly and the second one is um, their skills in other bit illustrator because they are quite important for the kind of projects that my company is doing. My company Science Visionary is helping scientists to publish their research through creative media. So the uh, process involves uh, a lot of communications with the scientist. Uh, so for someone uh, who can read the research paper uh, from the clients and then communicate with them directly, that can uh, really help the project move uh, forward smoothly. So uh, that's why I would look at their skills and their scientific literacy. And also, uh, most of our projects are vector art based, so that's why other Illustrator skills are very important. Um, but this is uh, the case that if you want to be a scientific illustrator, because I also hire graphic designers and animator, uh, so uh, then they don't need to read scientific papers. Um, so it's really that if you want to um, be a professional scientific illustrator, then I think uh, the, uh, your literacy to academic paper is very, very important. So let's get to the second question. Uh, so it's from Margarita Z. Uh, so she asked, is it important to have an education in medical illustration or is it more important to have a good portfolio? When I'm hiring, I look at the portfolio. Uh, but different company might have different policies, so I suggest you to ask them directly that what uh, they are looking for. You can also check the LinkedIn hiring ad for Scientific Illustrator, so you will see uh, what kind of requirements they uh, set for their uh, potential candidates. If you want to learn a little bit more about this topic, you can check this video of mine. Uh, I will give um, uh, pros, pros and cons of having um, a scientific illustration degree. Next question, uh, so it is from Haitskai Kai. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Uh, so do you have a link to your portfolio? Uh, yes, you can check out the website uh, of my company, then you will see my work over there. Uh, it is uh, scientistvisionary.com. So uh, next question, uh, what do you enjoy the most about the work you do? Uh, actually, I enjoy the most uh, about interacting with you on this YouTube channel. So uh, yeah, it's really amazing that I get to connect with uh, scientists around the world uh, through the channel. I find it uh, very amazing. On the intellectual side, I really enjoyed learning the most cutting edge uh, science development through working with my clients. So for example, I just uh, finished a project about uh, keratoconic cornea. So I learned about how um, the histology of our cornea changes when uh, we, um, patients have this uh, condition. So um, yeah, I really love learning. So this job provides me a lot of the opportunity to do that. In addition to the creative work part, I really like this process of building a business uh, from uh, publishing science uh, through uh, creativity and uh, creative media. Yeah, it involves a lot of work to build a company that there are uh, not only uh, the part that's uh, 
creating the product, but also uh, the marketing and also uh, communicating with the clients and look at the analytics of which part of the company is working, which part is not. It's, it is very much like doing a scientific research. Uh, I love it a lot. <laughs> so a lot of the research skills that I learned uh, while being a researcher actually helps me a lot in building a business. I do think scientists can be a very good entrepreneur. It's just uh, we never thought that would be a career track. Uh, so I really encourage people if you uh, if you have something that you find uh, can uh, benefit a lot of people from your research, you should also build a company from it. Also really like to pay my colleagues when they do really good work. Uh, somehow I get a lot of pleasure from doing that, being able to pay my employees. So. Um, yeah, these are the things I enjoy very much. Okay, next question is also from Anonymous Scientist. Uh, is there something you don't enjoy? Uh, or is there something that surprised you about the role when you first started? Okay, so I was really surprised by the reality of living my dream. I am doing uh, what I wanted to do, uh, which is uh, doing art and science at the same time and uh, also living abroad in uh, which is in Amsterdam. So what really surprised me was that uh, I still experienced a lot of stress. Uh, there's a lot of grinding in uh, trying to keep uh, the uh, trying to keep on bringing in business uh, to uh, my company and also um, and also how to sort out the visa. You know if you're a, if you're an alien, that's what they call us in a document uh, in the government document if you're an alien to a country and then you need to sort out your visa and uh, uh, that's also very stressful and um, so and it's also a very frustrating process and uh, living uh, abroad and starting a new life so all these uh, wide range of negative emotions that I'm experiencing uh, back then when I was doing a research job uh, is still there when I am living my dream life. However, I don't feel stuck uh, by these emotions. Uh, when I'm experiencing these uh, unenjoyable uh, emotions or experiences, they feel more like something that I have to experience at that moment. So uh, instead of feeling um, frustrated with these, I, I feel more like this is a necessary process that I have to go through. So I don't feel that uh, any of my time is wasted in dealing with these uh, annoyance. I feel very liberated and uh, very free. I feel that uh, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do in every moment. Um, I loved, I really love this feeling. So uh, that's something that surprised me a lot. Next question uh, from Anu Makta. How one can expand job opportunities after getting some certification and experience uh, skills um, in scientific illustration? If I understand this question correctly, uh, you would like to expand your opportunity to be employed by companies and organizations. Uh, then I would suggest you to do internships at the institutions that you want to work at and uh, also start networking extensively within that industry that you want to work in. Because if the hiring manager already knows you, then it is uh, much easier for you to get a job. It's one of the very uncomfortable reality that job seeking is a skill and um, it, it's a lot of time is not that black and white, you know, like uh, 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 and there is a lot of human factors involved in uh, job seeking. I would call it human factors. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So make sure that uh, you you are aware these uh, the reality of job seeking and uh, just uh, expose yourself to the the decision makers in the industry and uh, then there you can expand your job opportunities when you're trying to get hired. Okay, so next question uh, from Sharia uh, Khorasani. I hope I pronounced your name right. So from Sharia said, all I want, really want to do in life is creating art, but it's not easy to uh, live off of it. Uh, that is very true. And would I have to do another degree to get into scientific illustration or take some courses? 
uh, to find a job. Uh, it was because I know Sharia. Sharia is a, currently doing a PhD. I think this is a situation for people who have done well in the uh, academic setting that, um, that they think they need a certificate in order to start making money. Uh, but uh, that is actually not the case. Uh, you can start making money when you start making money. I wish that I knew this uh, way younger. The only factor that uh, whether you can make money out of something is whether someone uh, is buying it. So that doesn't require a certificate for you to do that. All you need to do is to have the product and know where to sell it. If you want to make a living out of your uh, art, then you can start any day. You don't need a degree for that. Uh, you only need to start selling your art. art. Uh, and you can begin today, this day. Uh, I, I encourage you to do that immediately. Uh, and then you will learn about how to uh, do a business and uh, how to uh, market your product. I think a lot of younger people like Gen Z, <laughs> like people way younger, are starting to aw become aware of these. You know, like you see a lot of these YouTubers are uh, people who uh, just started off when they're in high school. They never go to university. Uh, however, they are very good at what they do. And also they're very business savvy. So they are able to make a living out of it. So don't worry too much about the degree or certificate. Just uh, start selling your art right now and uh, see how it goes. Okay, and the last question also from anonymous scientists. Is it necessary to obtain a board certification in order to be competitive? Uh, I don't know much about uh, the board certification because this is a system in the US and um, I'm in the EU. So um, this is not here. I'm not familiar with this. Uh, I think uh, Anna Campbell might know more about this because she studied in the US. So shout out to Annie and uh, you can go follow her on her Instagram or uh, DM her as, to ask her about the certification. Okay, so these are the questions that I have gathered so far and uh, these are the ones that I'm answering today and I really enjoyed um, doing these uh, quest Q&A sections. So um, you're welcome to comment your questions below. You can also email me through my website, dropoutmed.com. There is a contact form uh, where you can put in your question and send it directly to me. Go check it out, ask me anything. Uh, once I gather enough questions, I will do this uh, kind of Q&A video again. So make sure you subscribe to this channel turn on the notification bell so you will uh, see the video when it's live and uh, i wish you all happy drop on mat and i look forward to seeing you in the future videos